<clears throat> so, hey everyone, welcome to another Minecraft video. Today I am going to be showing you a new type of control point that I have made for Seth Things Adventure Map. Uh, well, it's not really an adventure map, but yeah. So anyway, um, you may or may not be familiar with this room, and if you're not, this is Sethling and Hypixel's uh, TF2 in Minecraft, Dust Bowl. Uh, it is the control point map, and yeah, it requires a new snapshot. Uh, their names will obviously be in the credits, because I can't just do this without them. So yeah. Uh, oops. Why am I in creative mode? Uh, game mode zero. So, um, anyway. So, in here, uh, I'm just gonna start a game. I'm on single player, by the way, so, yeah. Uh, I'll be scout. La la la. So, now I'm in here. I do actually love how, like, this is done and stuff. The game should begin in two minutes. And yeah, I'll just run around for no reason because I'm not bothered to wait for two minutes. I'll get some steak too. And uh, yes, the thing I want to talk about in Sethling's adventure map is that with the control points, all that happens is that lights flick on and off. And on, slowly flick on. And then. <laughs> sorry. And then, yeah, it will display a message. Uh, it doesn't change color or anything, and I found that this is satisfactory. So mine will be able to change color. And the game should start any second now. I wonder if my speed pressure will run out. No, I think it lasts. Uh, so yeah. I really should be in game mode 2 right now. Can I punch these? Hey, I can punch these. <laughs> Lol. Anyway, yeah, this, this game should start any second now. Um, we'll just have to wait a bit for it. Arr, screech. Ah, uh, it's gonna take a while. Okay, I'll just skip to when the game starts. Alright, three seconds to go before the game starts. Okay, the mission has started and my speed potion has run out. Interesting. So anyway, I'm just gonna show you this map real quick and the first control point. Um, so as you can see, this is the control point, and when I step on it, the lights will slowly turn on. And when I step off it, you have to restart. So uh, basically, the aim is to stay on here without any defenders hitting you off. And as soon as you catch it, it says blue captured first capture point. Stage 1 time has been added. So, um, yeah, and then you progress and you capture all five capture points. And there's the second one. And yeah, so that's about it. So, basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a capture point that I've made. If you've actually played real TF2, then you may know that the capture point changed. Whoa! Anyway, you may know that the um, the capture points in that mission uh, change color when you've like completed it, like when you've catch caught it. So yeah, so uh, I'm stuck here. I started to realize. Should I go? Uh, not important. So, yeah, so the capture points actually change color, and obviously these don't. So, I was, uh, I was uh, inspired to make a, basically a block swapper, which swaps eight blocks. So, this is what I have done, and yeah, I'll just stop with one second to go. So, I'm back into my uh, normal creative mode world. And this is what I've designed, and it is basically an 8 block block swapper. And uh, a few things you may note, um, I don't have a light display um, right now. All you have to do to capture this control point is to step on the pressure plate, and it will automatically capture. 
But uh, however, if you want, you can easily d make a delay thing like Seth Link did, and wire it so that if when you capture it, like it'll change and broadcast a message. So right now, all I have is this right here, and the button is the reset button is over here. It's slightly buggy. You have to press it twice before it works. But I'm sure if you experimented a while, a bit, for a little bit, then you'll eventually uh, fix it. I I am sure that will happen. And yeah, so um, here's what happens right now. I hope it doesn't bug out. That would suck. Yeah, so basically it did bug out, which is good. And this is an eight block block swapper. And as you can see, I've captured it and turned it to blue. Um. Over here is my reset button. I have to press it. And as I said, I have to press it twice before it works. And yeah, it's not that buggy either. So, uh, one of the main problems I had was trying to get. Well, it wasn't really a main problem. I figured it out after a while. But was how to get a pulse from. Uh, say a block there, uh, surrounded with red wool, uh, a pressure plate there to the rest of the machine. Now, you may be thinking, this is easy, just like wire something right here, and da 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 da. But what you remember, as you saw here, notice there are pistons that pull this block down. So um I ha I so basically if I actually fully do it there's pistons right here. And that was a nuisance and it kept me up night after night trying to think of a solution. And I eventually did. And I actually found a better solution, but I was like three quarters done building this, so I wasn't bothered to fix it. But yeah. So if I put if I put in uh, uh, thing there. As soon as I press it, it's gonna get all the ones next to it to pull back. So that was a pain, and I eventually found a solution. So the solution is, if I get a fence gate, put it here, get a sticky piston underneath, block. Porch, and then redstone, like that. Uh, this no longer affects the pistons next to it, but uh, you can't see this now, but if I get a wooden pressure plate and try to fence gate on it, uh, oh yeah, sorry, but it does work, see, as you can see. And let's take it off. Yeah, and it does not affect the pistons. This is, uh, if you're wondering how I did that, it's a bud switch. Uh, they're very useful in making pistons activate. What happens if I power this block, two blocks above the piston, it'll think it should be out. But uh, it needs to update before it realizes it should push out. Or back in. So this gate right here opens and closes and provides the block update it needs. This is kind of the concept behind some block update detectors. So yeah, um, where was I? Yeah, so uh, this really should could be much more compact. But yeah, let's just start from the beginning. So uh, I'll just reset it quickly. If you're wondering why the button seems to last a bit longer, it's because of the new snapshot. Now it lasts a tiny bit more than a second. So, yeah. so this is the block that the piston is pushing right here. This leads to this redstone torch, which leads to a repeater. The repeater goes into this block, goes to this redstone, goes through my pulse limiter, and into one of Cube Hamster's pulse extender. And I'm gonna put his name in the video. And this is part of the concept of block swappers. Uh, basically, what a block swapper will do is that the block there's a piston there. This is a wall one, by the way. So the pistons should remain extended. 
la 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 so what happens is this piston pulls back this these both unpower and then power at the same time which for some reason swaps the block and then this piston pushes out again and to yeah that's basically it you'll notice that this piston has to pull back wait a bit for these two to do it and then out again and so what you do is you pulse limit these two so yeah i'll show you a design a floor ceiling design that's not mine but uh yeah it's been found so if you do this I hope I remember this. Uh, I'm a little foggy on the details, as usual. Da, da, da. Something like that. Oops. It's meant to be a button. You know what? I'll just cut it until I get it right. I see you know what? Screw it. I'll put it in another video. So, yeah. Basically, what we have here is a pulse extender made by Cube Hamster ages ago. Which leads to these... Uh, free triple piston extenders and you'll be like hey you can't make a triple piston extender this compact all you do is like uh, all you do is extend and nothing else the thing is I want it to just extend I don't really want it I don't really need it to retract because I really can't be bothered to make a full triple piston extender so I, all I did was on the other side I got another triple piston extender right here so what happens is I press that, these pull down, and then these swap the two side lanes, which would be here, 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 so that the it now there's now a wall block here and here. So and then these pistons here push the blue here. So before there's wall blocks here, here. Now it replaces this red wall with this. So the red wall is pushed to these three pistons over here. And then the the red wall's also been pushed over here. So yeah. Uh the reset is basically the opposite, so uh I'm just gonna activate it for a bit and you can actually go see the redstone wall. So there it was just extending right there. And yeah, I had to fiddle around with the delays to try and get it fast, and yeah. Um, for the button, it for some reason takes, I have to press it twice for it to work. I really have no idea why. Like, I can't find anything wrong with this. But, okay, I press it the second time. Basically, it just does that backwards. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, this just powers the second one. Few things you should know. Uh, this is the extent of the pulse I have here. I have to have some delay, a uh, six tick delay here, a uh, twelve tick delay between these two. And yeah, to wire these pistons up, all I have to do is uh, redstone here, double repeater, redstone here, two repeater, a block here. And a redstone. I had to do this because if I did this right here, it would conflict with the one next to it. So, yeah, this is just the compact way to kind of cross things over. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope Seth Bling may watch this one day or Hypixel and choose to incorporate it in his TF2 Dust Bowl design. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Oh, one more time. Red base capturing. Dun, dun, dun.